It's Wednesday here at Bob's Magic Emporium. Time for the next all-new Magician 101, the show for all magicians. A lot of great questions this week. We'll jump right into them. Remember to post your questions down below. For next week, I'll give them an answer. Future Magic 101 has the first question. Hi, Bob. What is on your magic wish list? Okay, uh, some stuff on my magic wish list. Number one, at the very top, this is, this is like the crown jewel of my magic wish list. I want to find this. T187 Tenyo's Mini Metamorphosis. That is on the top of my magic wish list. I check eBay every day to see if a new one has popped up on eBay. Can't find it though. I really want it. It's, the, it's, it's basically Tenyo's super rare trick. It's a hard to find, ultra rare trick. So um, if you know where to find T187 Tenyo Mini Metamorphosis or you want to sell yours, Please contact me here at Bob's Magic Emporium through uh, personal messages. I really want that one. But some other things on my magic wish list are Lemonstration by Max Maven. That's when we have a picture of a lemon on a card. You hand it to a spectator, they cover it with their hands, and you have some cards with letters on them, and they spell out lemon. And then you move them around, they'll spell out melon, and then the card in the spectator's hand changes into a melon. So I'm excited. I want to get that one. Uh, Nothing But the Truth by Cameron Francis, because a lot of people have talked about that, and I'm really definitely going to get that. Um, let's see, some of the Joker magic stuff, like Volcano Dice and the uh, uh, Joker Dice Tube. Uh, some stuff I also have on my magic wish list. The Crystal Silk Cylinder, uh, the Zone Zero Two is on my magic wish list, and uh, any Tenyo item. Really, any Tenyo item. I'm very fascinated with Tenyo. They put out some really cool stuff. But if you know where to get many metamorphoses, please post it in in the comments or personal message me because I want one so bad. All right, and Future Magic 101 also says, can you do a video with Molly? Uh, we'll see. Molly, if you don't know who that is, is my new doggy. We got her about two months ago, and she's still trying to be trained a little bit, so we're trying to train her a little bit. So when she gets fully trained to be not a bad dog in the house, I'll start training her maybe to do some magic. We'll see what happens there. All right, so, uh, so maybe you'll see Molly in a future video soon. Uh, Caleb Casper says, also, now, by the way, this is a continuation for something he asked about last week. He says, also, I meant not other stuff than magic, because I only like magic, but I mean something else to blend in with your magic to make it look like a magic shop, if you know what I'm talking about. All right, so he wants to know, he has a little closet he films in front of, and in the closet he has shelves, and he puts magic on them, sort of something like this. Um, let me, uh, he wants to know kind of how to fill it in. Uh, first of all, last week I didn't know you just meant magic. I'm sorry about that. But, um, uh, uh, to, to, to really fill it in, what you want to do, let me move out of the way so you can see mine fully here. Uh, what you want to do to fill it in is you want to use big things. So you want to use, like, I have a lot of big stuff like uh, Zigzag Rocky coloring books, stuff that kind of reaches almost the top of each shelf. So you want to use big things to fill up the space. You also, uh, in my opinion, I like saving all my little boxes for all my magic tricks, like the chameleon silk, the overstuffed box, uh, rabbits, rabbits everywhere. And I'll throw boxes up here to fill it in. Another thing I'll do is I'll throw DVDs on the sides. Like right here on the sides, you can see I have DVDs. That is to kind of fill it in a little bit, make it look not as uh, empty. Another thing you can also do is you can just throw in little things throughout here. Like I have uh, the do not remove sign from the comedy egg can down here just to kind of fill it in. I put in these little things. These are little uh, little coin trick to fill it in here. Uh, so I put in little things to fill it in. Also, like I say, fill in with boxes. Another thing that I would recommend doing, which I think makes it look better, because you can actually watch if you go back a ways, ways, actually th throughout the, the entire 365-day magic challenge, the Magic Shop uh, background set filming thing here has radically changed that 365 Day Magic Challenge. It started with like nothing on here, and I started adding more magic over time until I got the store counter, and then I started adding more magic back here until it just became this Magic Shop that you see now. Um, but when I first started, I didn't have any DVDs behind any of the tricks. I didn't have any like the DVDs back here. I think, and I just knocked that over. I think that having the DVDs behind all of the magic really helps it to feel more like a magic shop, in my opinion. So I would recommend putting DVDs 
behind all of your magic. I think that would make it feel more and more like a magic shot. The only thing I will say is people have been asking me, uh, how do you do, how do you make your DVDs and like your stuff like this stand up? Well, what I do is to make books and things like this stand up, I'll use these easels. These are little easels that I got from Michael's Craft Store, but you use these little guys, you can set them down, and they can actually be uh, extended, so you can have it if you want the, if it's, if it's a small little item where you can have a big item so it extends back a lot. And then all you have to do is just put your book or whatever right on here and notice that it sets it up real nice. So, you, again, like I say, you can make it go a little forward if you like by pushing this a little farther down. Or it can go a little farther back and kind of lay back like this if you want it a little farther back. So, these are nice. Then for the DVDs, I'll use these little things. They're risers. They're little plastic risers. You can get these. I think I saw these at Michael's. But you can also get these online. So, I got mine online. But you can use these little risers and things will sit on it. So like you can have like a DVD. What I do is I have a DVD sit on it like this. And it leans against the back of the magic shop. So I have a DVD sit on it. You could have a trick sit on top of one of these risers. And it just kind of, it kind of raises it up just a little bit. So it's not sitting right on the shelf. So I do that as well. And I put these like, some, some of the tricks are actually sitting on risers too. So I put them like behind the props like this, so they kind of make them stand up a little bit better. Uh, so you can definitely use that. But I would recommend putting a lot of DVDs uh, like in, like next to your magic, like up here and behind your magic as well. That makes it feel a lot cluttered. But you just want to make sure that if you want it to look like a magic shop, you want to make sure everything's kind of compact and tight together. Like notice there's not, no space in between here. Uh, there's, you know, and everything's kind of real close together. It gives you more of a cluttered feeling. Uh, but if you do not want a cluttered feeling magic shop, then what you want to do is you want to um, not have DVDs, well, not have silks coming out of everything and don't have DVDs behind if you want like a clean looking magic shop. But I kind of wanted mine to be like a compact, cluttered magic shop is what I wanted mine to do. And, Kayla, and if you have any more questions about what I said, because I know that was kind of rambly, post them down below and I'll answer them next week. And he also says, what do you think about the haunted doll? All right, haunted doll is not my style of magic. I would never use that trick because it doesn't fit how my character in magic. So I would never use it. But if you think it looks good for your routine, I would use it. It's a classic of magic. Everyone knows. All the magicians know about the haunted doll. But uh, I definitely, I definitely like it. Um, but I would never use it in my show. I think it looks cool, but I would just never use it. Jay Borthwick has the final question. Hey, mate, thanks for the judges and you picking uh, me to be in the top three. Thanks. And if you don't know what he's talking about, Jay Borthwick was one of the uh, finalists for the Digital Magician of the Year. All right, so he says, what do you think of Iconic Silver Edition by Shin Lim with the iPhone? Okay, that actually, to me, does not look like a good trick. There, what it basically is is a gold and a silver edition where you can change the spectator's phone to gold or silver, or you, there's a variety of things you can do with an iPhone. You can make it disappear. And it's basically a gimmick that works with an iPhone. Now, in the trailer, it says you can use any iPhone, borrow a phone, the only, borrow any phone. The problem is, I'm sure that it has to be only an iPhone 5. So if somebody's got an iPhone 4 or 4S, you probably can't do the trick. Which stinks, because I don't have a 5, I have a 4S. So I'm not going to probably be able to do the trick. That's why I would never get the trick, because it probably doesn't come in the gimmicks for the iPhone 4 or 4S. But if it does come in all the gimmicks, then I'd say go for it, because it looks really cool, the stuff you can do with it. And there's lots of applications you can do with it. The only thing is I would never uh, use it, because I have a feeling it probably only comes in iPhone 5. I could be wrong, but the research I did, it, I didn't really see if it said iPhone 4 or 4S. And he wants to know about Mirage Blue by Michael Chantelin. And I'm sure I said that name wrong. This trick looks so cool. What do you think, uh, do you think you would add it to your show? All right, Mirage, I thought the demo looked really cool for this trick. Uh, basically, you have a spectator choose a card. You have two cards with little holes cut out of them. And uh, you bury their card back in the deck. And you find it with these two little hole cards, and the card vanishes, and you see it visually go. It looks really cool. 
Um, just out of because I only I only watched the demo. It looks really cool, and I would probably put this into my show. Um, it, but I wouldn't use it all the time. I, it, it would be something that I would be like, oh, that might be kind of cool to freak out my friends. But I don't know if I would use it all the time because I don't really do that style of magic with like uh, holes cut into cards and that kind of thing. So. It looks cool, and maybe if I got it, I'd play around with it and be like, oh, wow, I really want to add this to my show. But I definitely might get that just for my Magic collection. Um, I don't know if I would get it or if I wouldn't, but from the trailer, what it looks what it looks is kind of neat. So if you're thinking about getting it, I think it looks cool. I would get it. All right, and he wants to know about Nothing But The Truth by Cameron Francis. And what about this would you think about uh, picking one of this up to add to your walkabout. Thanks, mate. Have a great week and happy Easter. Happy Easter to you too, Jay Borthwick. Um, but uh, nothing but the truth. I told you we talked about this later. That's why I said that earlier. Uh, nothing but the truth by Cameron Francis. I'm going to probably get this for my next Magic Geek order I place in May. It looks really cool. Basically, it's a lie detector trick. If you haven't seen it, you've been living under a rock if you haven't seen it because it's like the hottest thing in Magic right now. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, basically, you have the spectator choose a card. The cards can, you can have the spectator to tell you the truth or they can lie to you and they can say, like, uh, they, they pick a card and, they, and you say, okay, was it a red card? Uh, lie to me or tell me the truth. Yes, it was, and you say, and you spell out red, and it, they say, no, it's a black card. You're lying, and it says, uh, lie on the card. And you keep doing that, then at the end of the trick, all the cards change into the spectator selected card. It looks really cool. I'm definitely going to get it. So if you think about, if you're thinking about picking one up, I would recommend it. And it looks like a really cool trick, and I think it'd be perfect for walk around because it's a nice little packet trick, and it's something you can do, um, and really freak people out when, when, when the cards tell you tell them if they lie or tell the truth. All right, thank you guys so much for watching Magician 101 this week. I'll see you next Wednesday for an all-new Magician 101. Post your questions down below for next week, and I'll give them an answer. Do you know how to mix up cards? You say, you are not cards. You are not cards. You get the, the two tubes, and you get a certain amount of bottles. Let me grab one of the uh, real and usable. You're probably talking like a $100 trick, so that's why. And, and it's a real... Their selected card will say that the King of Diamonds goes right on the table. And all